Welcome to the Healthier Tech Podcast, the show about building a healthier relationship with modern technology. Now here are your hosts, R. Blank and Stephanie Warner. Rachel Varga is a double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist, an international clinical trainer for other physicians and nurses. She's a celebrity skin expert, speaker, and author in the field of regenerative and aesthetic nursing. Rachel is one of the first to blend Western approaches to skincare and rejuvenation, functional insights, and biohacking optimization strategies. Through education on non-toxic at-home skincare, hair care, derma rolling, peptides, in-clinic skin, and laser rejuvenation options, alongside biohacking and slowing cellular aging practices. Rachel helps inspire others with her unique toolkit to navigate and strategize aging impossibly well, using her holistic science of beauty, as well as through her two podcasts, the Rachel Varga podcast and the Beauty and the Biohacker podcast. Welcome to the Healthier Tech podcast, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me, Aaron, Stephanie. It's, it's a great pl- to have you. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> So before we get into the meat of today's chat, and I, I know we're, we're really looking forward to, to that, but there's something in your bio I wanted to ask about. And I understand at, at some point you deleted your Instagram. Now, mm-hmm. I, I've, I've personally have avoided social media. Um, I made that, that jump uh, in, in 2015, uh, and I've been super happy since doing that. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in, in learning a bit more about your decision. I, I hear people you know, dropping social. Um, but then I never actually meet anyone who's managed to do it. So what what triggered it? And what changes have you noticed? Well, I mean, let's be completely honest here. It is it was a little bit of a bold move as a online entrepreneur to completely drop one of my largest social platforms. But this was actually a very strategic move. I really noticed that there's a certain type of listener on the podcast than say on YouTube and Instagram. And I really want to reach those that are willing to do the work and do deep dives into content and not just this 30 second, 60 second here. How deep can you really go on important topics to help you be your best versions on the inside and out? But I actually am one of those people that you would consider a hypersensitive individual to electromagnetics. I've known this for a long time. I live on a very small island here in the Pacific Northwest of Canada. Actually, Dave Asprey's on the same island where I am as well. And I'm an outdoor enthusiast. And I just always noticed when I was doing these one to two days off-roading, I love overlanding four by four in my Land Rover, but I have to maintain myself because I go all the way into the bush 200 kilometers out of cell phone reception. And what I started to observe that those days after I would have what I call off-grid days, my skin would look better. I would get all these creative hits of um, things to create content on, podcast shows on, all these things. And I was also observing when I was at home and doing work on my computer here, I'd have my phone open and I would be scrolling, I would be monitoring instant messages, and you can't really prioritize the messages that way. So from a business perspective, it's actually not a good use of time. And I noticed my screen time was quite high on my device. I also Uh, We're in the age of influencers. I personally do not like to be influenced. I like being a sovereign individual that is making decisions and being able to keep a pure body, mind, spirit, and energy. And the EMFs, I mean, the verdict is out. The mainstream research that's available now on how even just holding your phone for five minutes while it's not on airplane mode to make a call or a text, how that changes your blood and then thus impacts the largest organ of your body, it's quite profound. And once you learn these things, you can't unlearn them. (laughs) So that's why I did it, to reduce screen time, to reduce my influence from external influences, telling me to buy things that I don't need that might actually be making me sick, and reducing my EMF exposure, and putting my energy more into my client care, creating podcast topics, emails, and all of that stuff that was just strategically as a business woman, 
a better return on investment with time. So it was a business decision. It was actually business <laughs> and personal. But yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the other thing that I found that was just this icing on the cake, I was already preparing the audience on Instagram, come follow me on the podcast, join the newsletter. I actually had messaged a girlfriend, something very interesting. She said, come visit me. And I said, well, I'm not really traveling right now. I'm sort of in preconception mode, right? So really looking after my body to prepare to make another amazing human with my fabulous husband and I. And because I use that word preconception, Instagram then showed me that evening on both my personal and professional pages, images of sick children, sick babies, sick kids. Oh, geez. Oh. And so that was really the icing on the cake that I think that certain platforms will try and keep you in a fear state so that you're more glued to it. To be like, oh, I got to learn about this. I got to learn about that. So that doesn't happen. And I wasn't having any of it. So I was already in the process of getting rid of it. And then that happened. And it was just like, this is a good decision in your highest good. Go for it. Be bold. That's okay. You'll be rewarded. And then I had the second best month of my business once, <laughs> once I got rid of it. So that's validation. <laughs> so uh, in the intro, I introduced you. Well, there was a lot, uh, obviously, on your, your CV that I, uh, I used to introduce you. But one of the things I mentioned is that you're a double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. So what is double board certified? Uh, what does that mean? And, and how did you become one? That's a great question. Obviously, I did my traditional training as a registered nurse, so a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. And so then I did uh, about two years of acute oncology palliative care. I did two years of peds ICU trach vent care, looked after sick kids breathing uh, through ventilators. And then I transitioned into the aesthetics and regenerative side of things, which quickly became my passion. And to be in that field, because it's such a specialized field, you don't have to be board certified, double board certified to be in it, but to, for me to become an academic researcher, sit on the board and of journals and be a peer reviewer. And also I'm an international clinical instructor. It was the appropriate move for me to then do a board certification in the space of aesthetic nursing. And believe it or not, a lot of aesthetic nurses out there don't have that credential, but the ones that really care about safety and really being at the top of their game, they do have that additional so, board certification. So a bit of a bit of a smarty pants. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I gather because your mother was a nurse that was she your sort of guiding, your, your inspiration to, to follow this path? Yeah, my mom is a, she's retired now, a registered nurse. My father's a carpenter, so very uh, skill-based backgrounds. And having nursing in your back pocket to look for yourself and your loved ones is very handy. Understanding health, under understanding how to care for this beautiful meat suit that we're given. We're only given one, <laughs> so we better take good care of it. And I saw her actually really not put her oxygen mask on first. And so for 30 years, she was a night nurse. She did shift work. She put on a lot of weight. She got up to 210 pounds. So when I was at about 13, 14, she did the South Beach diet. So that instilled in me very healthy eating practices. And then uh, when I was in my mid twenties, she was diagnosed with estrogen receptive breast cancer. So then I became aware of all these estrogens in our skincare and our food products. We're just inundated with hormone disruptors. And then also my sister was diagnosed with, with a type of cancer within a month of each oh, other. Wow. No. So I knew that I had to make the very strategic move to really harness myself and also, you know, what is this biohacking thing to optimize our environment, to support our epigenetics, which is our expression of our DNA that we are born with. And so I learned a lot from my mom about how to not be a healthcare pr provider and how to put my oxygen mask on first. So I, I know that you do a lot of work with, with uh, energy and mindset, right? Which is not something you often hear from, from people in the medical establishment. So why do you believe mindset is and energy is part of, of, of beauty. Well, if you think about it, 
what makes up most of our environment? It's the space between, it's the dark matter, it's the quintessence. So here's my super nerd physics part. <laughs> <laughs> so about 70 to 80% of our world that we live in is space. Now what's happening in that space in between are, for the most part, electromagnetic interactions. And if those interactions are awry, in our physical form, we're going to have less ideal production of hormones and other things happening in our body. Our blood will not be flowing optimally to carry oxygen and nutrients to our tissues and then uh, removing CO2 and toxins. And the other thing with energy and spirituality was I quite simply started to observe what my most vibrant and radiant clients were doing. And I started in the aesthetics world in about 2011, and I've done well over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures. But there was one subset of clients and patients that were working with me that were generally aged 50 to 90. And they had never done anything to their skin before. They were using hippy-dippy skincare with probably some rancid oils, but <laughs> they were living their best lives. They had body, mind, spirit, energy practices. So physically, they were doing strength and conditioning, yoga, flexibility, stability type practices. Yoga and Qigong are very grounding uh, from an energetic perspective. And then from the mind perspective, they were playing music. They had types of hobbies maybe they did art they just did something to light them up and then with the spiritual aspect they pretty much all had some type of spiritual practice and I definitely noticed differences individuals depending on what their faith and spirituality was but for the most part if they had some type of practice if you seek you will find so the saying goes they had this radiance and then there was the energy perspective of it, living a very grounded lifestyle, not working in a you know skyscraper and having all these smart meters and all this, that, the other thing. They were outdoors a lot with their families and enjoying you know the West Coast Island lifestyle that I also enjoy as an outdoor enthusiast. So instead of really focusing on what my clients were doing in their lifestyles that were leading to things like accelerated aging, loss of elastin and collagen, fine lines, wrinkles overnight, redness and signs of inflammation to the eyelids, redness to the cheeks, the corners of the nose, which are all signs of internal inflammation. The skin will simply be displaying that down the line as like a late alarm system, hyperpigmentation, losing of hair, uh, an inability to heal well after some type of scar or traumatic injury. I didn't want to focus on what were the contributing factors leading to that. I actually wanted to focus on what those more, more radiant and vibrant clients of mine were doing. And I wrote a whole ebook on it. And so now what I do is I study radiance. What is radiance? What is it that makes someone hop on camera or enter a room that is peaceful, gracious, competent, commanding? What is it that makes you want to be around them? Are they maybe doing something with their energetics that, you know, you know, with heart math and fields and all this stuff, it extends at least 10 feet out. What is that? How can we optimize that? The skin is, it's just going to come. When you do the body, mind, spirit, energy stuff, the lifestyle stuff, you're simply going to get great skin as a byproduct of that. So it's not just going to the skincare, going to the rejuvenation products. It's how do you do the basics? Yes, it's going to take a lot of work, but let's lay the foundation and then we'll add the other things. So, so it's not often that at least someone like me meets someone who, who knows as much about skin as you do, but it's even rarer to find someone with that expertise who also has an understanding of an interest in uh, electromagnetic radiation. So that's actually, I think, the meat of, of what we'd like to, to get into today. And let just start starting broad strokes. In, in what you found so far, how does EMF impact skin? It's actually very, very simple. It comes down to the blood. When we are 
And I mentioned this just briefly earlier, but I'd like to expand on this because you can actually visualize what happens to the blood when we're on our phone for five minutes, when you have your phone, not in airplane mode in your backpack or your purse is your blood actually transforms from this nice round donut shape, red blood cell, and which should be moving freely and bumping off other red blood cells like an inner tube would going, you know, in a body of water. Those are healthy electromagnetic interactions where there's just like a little bit of repulsion between each of the red blood cells. Now, when our electromagnetics are off, our electromagnetics are off, we are not grounded. We become a little too positive, actually. So when we contact the earth barefoot, we're actually exchanging the uh, the, the excess protons we have and getting this uh, electromagnetic gradient restored, which of course has interactions with your mitochondria and all of that. Uh, our bodies are heavily electromagnetically centered with everything. Like I said, the space between, it's just simply a lot of energy in there. So when we're exposed to electromagnetics and specifically non-ionizing radiation, it changes your blood cell to have sharper edges, no longer nice and smooth and round. And then we get what, what's called Rouleau happening, where the red blood cells, they start to stack and form these chains, kind of like a worm. No, I'm sorry, or, you, what did you call, you call that Rouleau? Rouleau. How do you, what, can you, I'm sorry, can you spell that? I don't think I could spell it right now. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we'll find it and put it in the show yeah, notes. We didn't, we didn't mean to, I, I to did not honest, mean to put you on the spot. No, 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 it's yeah. fine. I will... I will admit when I specifically know something and if I kind of like half know it, I'm not going to expand on it. This is actually a term that I first became aware of only about two or three months ago. Okay. Okay. So what happens with Rouleau is it's almost like the sugar, you know, those sugar bracelets with like the little round candies mm -hmm. that you can yeah. bite off. Now that's what happens. And then when the red blood cells start to clump together and form these chains, you're actually getting clotting factors happening. And then your red blood cells simply aren't going to be delivering oxygen and nutrients to your brain, to your skin, to your other vital organ systems. And then you're also going to have an overaccumulation of things like CO2 and toxins because the blood is basically your, your life force. It's like your engine oil. If you don't have that, everything's going to seize up and not work very well. Um, you can tell I'm a little bit of a petrol head. <laughs> the male audience members will appreciate this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what happens to the skin is we often can get eye irritation and half the population has what we call dry eye. And I have 11 plus years in the space of ophthalmology and oculoplastic surgery. So you have like your aesthetics practice, then you got your plastic surgery practice, then you got your oculoplastic surgery. So that's where I've been living for well over a decade. And the eyes, we only have two of them, so we got to take good care of them. But when we are in front of a screen and all that, the eyes, and this is actually very uh, mainstream now. If you go on PubMed, look up dry eye and EMFs, you'll find these articles. There's at least one that I know about that I'm going to be referencing in my article, my literary review on EMFs and the skin. So we have dry eye and we have over 50% of the North American population affected by this. They'll go to drops, they'll go to these really expensive uh, procedures to actually transform the, the liquid in the myobium glands. It should be like a nice, well-flowing liquid, but it turns into like a lard or like a, um, a fridge type of or room temperature butter consistency instead of an olive oil consistency. So you're not getting the lubrication of the eyes and then you get dry eye. And then with the skin, with the periphery, we actually can get tingling on the, on the skin, on the cheeks. Uh, we can actually experience redness and irritation. So a lot of times people might think, oh, I have sensitive skin. I've been told I have a rosacea. Well, maybe your skin just quite simply isn't getting good blood flow. And maybe you need to focus on at least cleansing the skin morning and night, double cleanse in the evening, by the way, moisturize the skin morning and night. That's like your multivitamin for your skin sunscreen every single day and exfoliate about five, two to five times a week. And it's very simple when you think about it that way. Yeah. The one thing, the one thing in that list that you, you just mentioned, um, that I, I have to do religiously is, is the sunblock. 
Uh, I don't know if you can you can tell. I, <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Uh, as as Woody Allen used to say, I don't burn, I stroke. Um, so that, <laughs> so that was a long list of of impacts, right? So so let, let's 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 find a way to kind of slice into that a little bit. Are those um, is the work that you found is that largely in the radio frequency microwave? Se uh, segment or of the electromagnetic spectrum? Do you do, like the wireless radiation? Yeah, wireless radiation, Bluetooth in specific, uh, okay. non ionizing radiation, uh, full on radiation, like from nuclear reactors, that's got a whole gamut. Right. Yeah, at that point, the skin is the least of your worries. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the skin's the least of your worries. But the other interesting thing that you just mentioned, R, was your skin. And you and I actually have the same skin type. And obviously what we talk about here on the show is not medical advice, educational information only. If you think you have a health condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. Bonus points if you find a practitioner that understands Western medicine and also functional medicine and practices both. Those are the rock stars of our generation. So with our skin type R, you and I are, we have less melanin in our skin and we're a little bit more predisposed to skin cancers and accelerated aging. So if you find that you also burn easily outside, there's also some work that can be done with internal supplementation. I love third-party independent lab tested supplements. I love third-party independent lab tested everything. And so for me to live this life of an outdoor enthusiast, being outside in nature, smelling the bears downwind from them, seriously, this is my life. I don't always <laughs> want to, I don't always want to slather my body in sunscreen, but if I take certain supplements, if I keep my internal inflammation down, my body's better able to manage UVA and UVB rays, right? Which is essentially a form of radiation. Light from your uh, blue light from your laptop studio lighting here, that's, that's the blue light. And that actually reaches a hundred nanometers deeper than what we get outside. So that's a wavelength of light. So not only are we needing to manage non-ionizing radiation, we're also needing to manage light that can impact the skin. The word sunblock that you used R is actually a misnomer. The correct word for a sunscreen type of product is a screen because things will still get through it. So that's why having good skincare, good antioxidant serums to gobble up, gobble up the free radicals that can form from that is also really important. So it's not just about putting sunscreen on, it's about using sunscreen with built-in antioxidants. It's about using antioxidant serums and moisturizers, and it's about not using chemical sunscreen filters, which are known hormone disruptors and are killing our coral reefs. So there's a lot to know about sunscreen, but basically mineral only. If you turn around your... Moisturizer, primer, BB cream, CC cream, sunscreen product, look in the medicinal ingredients. If it says anything other than zinc or titanium, and it has anything ending with an own, those are hormone disruptors. You need to get rid of it. A lot of your listeners tuning into the show may be wanting to optimize their performance. And when we think about the brain, the brain is an organ, the skin's an even bigger organ. All these people dealing with long C, brain fog, all this, that, the other thing. What's to say it's not related to an inappropriate blood flow, lack of blood flow, right? That's why we feel so good when we're out in nature. We take time off. We get grounded. We aren't on our computers or laptops. Those are the benefits you're getting is you're getting better electromagnetic uh, nuances in your body, essentially. So you just mentioned uh, supplements, uh, but you, without going, you, you, you didn't go in, into detail on that, but are those the same that people can find on your, your store? Is that, are, are those the ones that you're, uh, you're talking about? Correct. When I'm doing interviews, I don't always, and also on my podcast too, I don't always like to go brand specific mm -hmm. because there can be reasons for uh, business practices. Maybe the company reformulates, maybe the company got bought by another company and then their quality goes downhill. So on my e-store at rachelvarga.ca, that is my curated list of 13 to 15 skincare brands, um, hair stimulating products, makeup, supplements, all these things that I have 
go on, put through the gamut and I see what my clients keep coming back for and that I've worked with for 11 plus years. But with supplements, it's a little bit of a wild west these days because you'll go on your Instagram and your social media and you'll, you'll see all these influencers telling you to buy is she don't need, that's probably going to make you sick. Convenience is killing us these days. Don't even get me started on those um, Bluetooth AirPod headsets, like our new smoking, but you really have to become a wiser and more discerning consumer in literally every aspect of your life these days. And no one's going to do it for you. It's really up to you to learn about these things, which is, I'm so thrilled to be on the show here today, the Healthier Tech Podcast, to be sharing this information, because I truly believe that electromagnetic frequencies, specifically non-ionizing radiation, uh, is the new smoking of our generation. So uh, this might be a little off topic, but just to pull a thread that that you uh, hinted at a couple minutes ago, you said... Uh, the listeners ideally uh, should find a practitioner who's um, trained in both Western and non-Western disciplines as, a, uh, as an approach to, to healing. How do people do that? Like, how would a listener go out and follow that advice? What's really interesting, so I'm in Canada and I work with primarily Americans. And what I noticed between the two cultures is in Canada, we show up to our doctor, we're good with that free information and a story. In the US, Americans are traditionally used to actually paying for their health care. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. And what I find is they're a little bit more willing to maybe like do a little bit of research. They got more skin in the game, almost, it seems. Um, the whole thing about blending the best of not just both worlds, but many worlds, not just functioning in a box is I personally think you're just going to get better care, right? Western uh, approaches to skin and rejuvenation is going to be very cut and dry. Do the skincare, do this chemical peel, do these laser treatments for pigmentation, tone, texture, and collagen, do this injectable to soften those lines between your brows, crow's feet, forehead lines, do this filler to pump the cheeks, pump, plump up the cheeks, plump up the lips, do the surgery to remove excess skin to the eyelids and do facelift, all this stuff. That's very much like the Western rejuvenation model. Now, what I do is I also learn from some of the most brilliant minds in the functional space. We're talking JJ Virgin, Dave Asprey, you know, Dr. Mercola, all these people that are really on the forefront of say, hey, wait a second. We know that these oils are terrible for us. We know that these foods are highly inflammatory. This, that, the other thing. If you can combine all that lifestyle stuff that might start to be like a little bit fringe, but then you get results from it. And these, these people are getting results from it. And I just, when I became intertwined and interwoven and connected with these very high level types of types of practitioners and speakers, they were actually telling me that some of the clients that they were working with, patients they were working with, were actually having issues uh, with some of their rejuvenation procedures, side effects, things like that. It's like, okay, what's going on here? What's what's happening? Because I'm, you know, I see people have great results, right? But I'm also careful who I attract and work with. I I was tending to uh, work with a very healthy uh, population also. But they said, you know, it's usually people with autoimmune stuff, things that have other diseases in the background. And then I started to dig a little deeper in here and realize that it really all comes down to this toxic bucket, right? So this toxic bucket theory of if you keep adding to this bucket of toxins that your body has to deal with and manage, when you add one more thing, which could be rejuvenation, it's going to tip over or you have an exposure to some type of environmental toxin, it's gonna tip over, you're gonna have things manifest in your skin and all sorts of stuff. So not all practitioners are willing to do the work to expand on the information that they paid a lot of money for in their education. The best healers that I know of are those that are constantly learners, right? They're kind of always in school, they're always getting more credentials. So I thought, wait a second, these people are different. They're practicing in a different way. Why do we have to stay in a box? Who says we can't expand um, our wheelhouse of ways that we can serve ourselves, our families, and communities? 
So it comes down to also finding a practitioner that's in resonance with you. Um, you'll see this on YouTube. You'll see different uh, YouTube influencers giving you skin advice and you look in their eyes and it's like, hello, anybody home, <laughs> <laughs> right? There's, there's none of this vitality, vibrance, radiancy, high vibe attributes. And of course, they're promoting these skincare products that are very cheap, easy to access over the counter. They're dropping their Amazon links. They're dropping their Tajay links. <laughs> and they're making bank on this stuff, but they're not actually helping people's skin get healthier. It's just like a Band-Aid. And, you know, it's obviously even going to contribute to um, toxic stressors. So when I write articles, I speak to providing optimal rejuvenation to the eyelids, the jawline, my rejuvenation algorithm. You can find my research articles on my website, rachelvarga.ca slash research. Uh, a couple of them are open sourced. But the theme is how do we get optimal rejuvenation? And what I've started sprinkling in my papers uh, is actually good faith health exam each and every time someone's coming in for something. Is there autoimmune stuff running in the background? If they're not feeling well, if say they're just you know low energy, they're they're fighting something. Maybe their toxic bucket's a little full. They're they're looking inflamed even. Maybe delay the rejuvenation. And maybe go towards other things like skincare and lasers and dermal rolling instead of some of these other non-surgical options. And it's actually being very well received. So uh, for me to segue into a different type of aesthetics practitioner, you never really know how your colleagues are going to take it, if it's going to be well received or if you're going to get outed. And thank goodness, <laughs> it is very well received internationally in both the USA and UK, which I'm very grateful for. And it's very humbling, actually. So you've you've given here a lot of strategies or uh, uh, indications for the types of uh, resilience and rejuvenation work that that people can do. When you're working with a, a client uh, or a, a patient, um, what are the types of EMF mitigation uh, that you recommend uh, uh, as part of as part of your treatment regimen? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, this isn't technically a treatment regimen because we can't make health claims here. But where I like to at least start is, okay, I'm working with the client in a virtual setting like this. I was I was doing virtual stuff back in 2017, 2018. Everyone thought I was nuts. They're like, why are you working back there in that little shed on their property? <laughs> Talking to people on the other side of the country. I was like, there's something to this. People in my local community don't, you know, other people deserve to know this stuff too. So then I kind of opened it up uh, internationally and I work with, uh, with uh, primarily Americans and uh, those in the UK and such. And I help them find clinics near them and give them the skin, skincare routine uh, that they can follow at home and give them that plan and ongoing support. And when I'm working with someone, I actually always like to sit down with them and say, hey, what are you doing to purify your air, water, lighting, and electromagnetics? And are you doing regular cleansing? And then I'll get a sense of, you know, are they a beginner biohacker? Are they kind of intermediate? <laughs> or are they advanced? And I, I love nerding out on this stuff because what purifying your air, water, lighting electromagnetics and regular cleansings do is they just allow you to be your most purest version which is going to be allowing you to be your most truest or authentic version i like the word pure and true a little bit more than authentic kind of has a deeper meaning to me so when i'm talking about emfs right away turn your phone on airplane mode don't give your cell phone number out when you're wanting to work keep it more professional keep it on your your email and not so much um, on your phone because you're going to get that high beta cortisol dumping when you get dings and calls and stuff like that. You need to compare. Dave Asprey taught me that. He's like, Rachel, never give your cell phone number. <laughs> and uh, so I owe him credit for that. So keep the phone on airplane mode, silent, check it when you want to check it so that you're also in a good energy to connect with people. Like say you're, you're just not feeling yourself that day or, you know, something's off, something's happened. You might not actually be in the best headspace to connect um, for both personal and professional reasons. So that's okay. We're living in this very strange world where we're always connected. We're always accessible. And we know exactly, well, probably not what's happening on the other side of the world. This is too much for our amazing brains but they're still like only this big and so we have to make 
practitioner that we're limiting our influence and also um, autonomic nervous system dysregulating stressors. That's what I call them. So okay, that was a mouthful. <laughs> autonomic nervous system. <laughs> Your ANS. You got to learn to master this. R. You said resilience. You want to be a resilient human. If I've been in two crashes, uh, two car crashes, none were my fault. Actually, on the second one was on my way to the ocean to do my cold therapy up to my jawline for nine minutes. And the ocean in here in Canada is, is cold all the time. It's not like we're in Hawaii. Like it's, it's not bathtub water. It's very cold, like hypothermia and 14 minute situation. So focusing on first starting to turn your phone on airplane mode. If uh, I'm on my laptop, I turn the Bluetooth off everything in my home is not connected to Bluetooth. So I don't have Bluetooth speakers. Yes, I have a Bluetooth printer, but then I make sure that that's turned off. And in fact, actually turned off because with digital devices, they're kind of always looking for you to interact with it. It's always on. So for example, my vehicle is the old school Land Rover. And so when I turn that key, it responds to me. But with all these smart cars, you got your fob, you get close to your car. Oh, it's going to wake up because it knows you're nearby. And so we have to be very aware of that, that uh, digital technology is always looking for us to respond to it. And it's always on. You literally have to actually unplug it <laughs> so it doesn't have a power source. I'm a huge fan of shrouding. So it. What's that? There. So shrouding is essentially literally covering your covering your body. So you can use different bed canopies. You can use different types of sheets um, and fabric. So I actually sleep with protective bedding and um, the hood comes over my eyes. And then I literally like cocoon myself in this. So for a, about seven to eight hours a night, my body is not getting inundated with non-ionizing radiation. So my blood has a chance to actually actually flow properly and get a little bit of break. Um, sometimes I'm working, I'm wearing uh, different types of protective clothing. The only problem with that is, ladies and gentlemen, the EMF protective clothing out there. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> it's for the guys. Okay. Yes. So yeah. it's for the guys. Um, so I went for about a year and a half, two years looking like I was on the, um, looking like I was on, on Star Trek. And yes, I grew up watching Star Trek. Um, <laughs> it's just not the most feminine look. I'm just going to say that. So we still want to have style. We still want to be beautiful and um, have that balance of masculine and feminine. So at least try and sleep and be shrouded that way. I really think you have to uh, shroud yourself. There's lots of things that we can do for our homes to reduce dirty electricity um, turn your router off at night. Those are really simple things to do as well. So airplane mode on, Bluetooth off, router off at night, and shrouding yourself. And of course, I have these fabulous headsets that <laughs> I purchased myself from you. And they're great. They're super comfortable. By the way, can you explain to me if these headsets are changing the um, the digital is, is it changing the uh, acoustic waves from like a digital wave to an acoustic wave for sound? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that, yeah. So air tubes, they work by, uh, because normal headsets, normal wired headsets, they, they transmit the uh, sound as a signal on the wire. And with air tubes that gets converted just to, to uh, air vibrations uh, part way up the, and so, so yeah, it, it goes from, from signal to actual air, air waves. That's what I thought. Okay. Thank goodness. Right, Cause I hadn't <laughs> actually like researched that, but I just kind of figured because the, um, the digital acoustic waves are going to be at a different frequency than say the the waves that we get when I play my, my Gibson Les Paul guitar and all oh, this sure, stuff. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, the sounds we get outside in nature, those are all acoustic sound waves, which mm. our ears were designed to handle. So yeah, your headsets, Thank you. <laughs> Thank awesome. You. I, I also noticed in the background, and maybe this has something to do with, you, you know, how you handle EMF and, and exposure in your, in your office setting, but I noticed the lighting and I also noticed your glasses. Uh, do you have any tips for our listeners about things they can do right in their work environment when you're kind of have to be in front of your computer? Oh, such a great question, Stephanie. Thank you. Actually on the Rachel Barker podcast, I just did a house and home 
home special episode where I focused on some of my favorite top picks for air, water, lighting, and electromagnetic radiation. And because I have finally just had a chance to try out the S5B products, I am very excited to be adding your products also to my favorites page at rachelvarga.ca. So what I like to do in my office is I got some air purifiers in here. I have uh, the True Light lightsaber sticks. They're pretty cool. I feel like I'm on the set of Star Wars. Yeah, they uh, definitely uh, add a nice tone <laughs> and, and balance. Yes. And then I also have another red light here. And I like having red light actually in my office when I have my studio lighting on because it just kind of helps to counteract the like stark brightness of these white LED lights. And because I'm on my laptop for many hours in a day, uh, I like to wear protective lenses. Um, these are the Viva Rays. I really like Rudy who makes the company. These are pretty slick looking glasses. Uh, I've tried a number of other ones. Style is important to me as a Absolutely. lady. And I like these ones because you can actually put on uh, different lenses as well and make them prescriptions. So I'm going to be doing that. I know he's not. Uh, I'm not paid to mention that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but these are just things that I do to help myself. Uh, I keep my cell phone in a protective case and on airplane mode when I'm not using it. Um, I like to stand so that we're, we're going to see this epidemic of like flat bottoms. <laughs> you actually get muscle atrophy of your gluteal muscles when you're sitting on it. Yeah, it's a thing. And I that makes do... sense. That makes a lot of sense. And we do a lot of sitting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I like to stand. I like to be able to move. I like to be able to, um, at a couple times uh, when I'm on a session, just look outside and change my eye focus as well. And uh, when you have your gaze, uh, I co-host a Beauty and the Biohacker podcast, Katie, she said, actually, when you change your gaze, it uh, actually does something to your brain to help boost creativity. And then I have my husband in the next room. So sometimes I'll go smooch him and then I'll get some of his free floating testosterone. <laughs> funny things. That's, the, awesome. that's the first time I've heard of that as an EMF mitigation tactic. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And just so, you, you know, I've been sitting here very quietly listening to all of this great information. And I think, you know, you mentioned so many different, you know, things that you can look into or our listeners can look into. Could you break down just three two to three simple things that say a listener who maybe isn't, doesn't have a skincare routine could do, you know, easily implement into their lives? Oh, that's such a great question. So there's not <laughs> three, I'm sorry. There could be five, there there's could be five. more. The quintessential <laughs> five key basics to healthy skin. Now I've only learned this because of my clinical experience. When I would have clients on a basic routine, cleansing morning and night with the double cleanse in the evening, not just a splash of water, but actually using a cleanser that's designed for their skin needs. A double cleanse in the evening. So the first cleanse will take off the dirt, oil, debris, dead skin, cosmetic creams, makeup. That's why air purification in the home is so important for the skin also. And then your second cleanse is actually going to be washing your face and then rinsing that off, looking at lids, neck, side of the neck, top of the chest, top of the back as kind of one unit so that you're not in your 60s and have floating head syndrome. This is a thing. <laughs> no floating head syndrome, ladies and gentlemen. So cleansing morning and night, really key. So whatever cleanser you have at home, just make sure you're not doing the splash of water and make sure you're rinsing it off fully. And with all of your products, make sure that they're free of parabens, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes, fragrances, however, for fragrances, I check with the manufacturers of products I work with to make sure that they are not using a phthalate fragrances. Sometimes fragrances in a product, well, most of the time, is a trade secret. And it's it can be a blend of essential oils, which are, you know, totally fine. Um, so then you're moisturizing the skin. So that's step two. You can get away with a moisturizer for the face, eyelids, neck, chest, hands. Sometimes you'll want a different eye cream. Sometimes you'll want a neck cream. Sometimes you'll want an antioxidant serum. But at least, at least put a moisturizer on your skin that's free of toxins to nourish the skin and protect it. Then you want to be using your sunscreen every single day. So even if you're kicking it at home, you still got your LEDs. By the way, if you have overhead LED lights in your home, change those to halogen. That's going to give you more of that full spectrum of lighting. 
LEDs, convenience is killing us these days. Those, you know, Bluetooth headsets that are irradiating your brain, literally. Um, hey, great way to become an airhead. That's a bad joke. That is a very <laughs> bad joke. That's not a good joke to be making as a client. <laughs> But what we want to make sure that we're doing is we're changing out our LED lights overhead. And I actually postulate, I should actually do a literary article review on this, that I think that LEDs in the home are actually contributing to hair loss because the LED lights above us, like I said before, blue light reaches 100 nanometers deeper in the skin than UVA and UVB rays do, right? Very important that we remember these things. So change out your lighting, your electrician or your partner's It's going to think you're nuts because LED is cheap, lasts forever. But like I said, convenience isn't always good for us these days. So sunscreen every single day, mineral sunscreen literally every day. And the eyelids are um, definitely important to to pay attention to. The eyes are the first area of the face to show aging. And to carry that down to the neck, the sides of the neck, gentlemen, ladies with short hair, do the back of the neck too. And always put your leftover products on your hands and maybe your arms. And then you need to exfoliate about two to five times a week, like I mentioned before, but I'll expand on that. So you can maybe use a scrub that you have at home. Just make sure it's not a sugar, salt, rice, apricot hull scrub, cranberry hull scrub, charcoal scrub, because up close, those particles are very jagged in their Mm -hmm. appearance. Like those red blood cells, we want nice, smooth type of polishing particles to buff and polish the skin, not scratch and tear. I actually, I do a lot of teaching and I'm teaching an oral surgeon. I would do an online session. I'm doing an in-clinic session for him coming up here. And he said, oh, I can't stand all these charcoal toothpaste because they ruin the enamel. And I, we're seeing all these trendy things, right? People brushing their teeth with black charcoal. And then you see all this, all these face products. We saw that with CBD and this, that, the other thing. So it's like, really stick with the trend to avoid the trends and don't just look for that one several bullet. It's going to be a couple of things. So gently exfoliating two to five times a week is really important because with the skin, the top layer of the skin, what we see is called the stratum corneum. It looks like cornflakes. And if you're not careful, those cornflakes can trap oxidative stressors like dirt, oil, debris, dead skin, cosmetic creams, and makeup. So if you're complaining of dry skin and irritated skin and you're afraid to scrub or afraid to cleanse because someone told you on YouTube that that was the right (laughs) thing to do Hmm. or just to be a water splasher, then you're actually having those oxidative stressors build up and create oxidative stress in the skin. So you got to clear out the old, make room for the new. So gently uh, exfoliating is really important. And again, it's really tricky finding good products. So that's where I come in handy. I pre-vet everything. And then maybe doing an overnight mask to exfoliate and hydrate the skin or doing some type of at-home peel. So cleanse, moisturize, sunscreen, scrub, and at-home masks and peels. And then you can add things like dermal rollers onto that, take great supplements, do your healthy living practices. But those five things you could probably start to optimize with whatever products you have now. And then, you know, book a session with me and then we'll make sure that you're going to be hyper-focused with what you're doing for your skin needs so that that product that you're buying that says it's going to do this, 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 you're hoping it's going to do that. Right. But not all products are created equally, just like EMF mitigating, (laughs) mitigating devices. It's... I. If I'm going to be totally honest with you, I think that the EMF mitigating devices is a minefield of gimmicks these days. And the same thing goes with skincare and skin supplements. You have to be really careful because I think some of these EMF mitigation um, emulates and things like that can actually contain quite a bit of heavy metals. And I'm sure you guys know all about that, but uh, yes, buyer beware these days. So you mentioned uh, people uh, booking sessions with you. So that's on your website, right? Where, where, where should people go for that? Yeah, rachelvarga.ca is where you can find me. And if you use promo code SYB15, that will get you 15% off also. Oh, wow. And I love, I love just sitting down. You know, I'll do sessions for you, R, and Stephanie. And we'll sit down and you can let me know what your skin goals are, whether that's um, dry skin, red skin, sensitive skin, hyperpigmentation, fine lines, wrinkles, hair stimulation, 
And then well, I think I'll... that ship has sailed for me, Rachel. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It happens to all of us. Over these last couple of years, I was actually losing my edges as well. And over the last two months, I've been using particular products to um, actually get my edges back. Thank heavens. My hair is my thing. And, <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. And I will, there's a lot of people online that really kind of move away from the one-on-one -on -one stuff. They're like, I'm too good for this one-on-one -on -one stuff. I'm going to do group trainings and all this stuff. It's like, I love the one-on-ones because I actually learned so much from my clients and I tend to attract a lot of um, intuitive empaths and hypersensitive individuals to electromagnetics. I suppose like is attract like, like attracts like, um, or from an electromagnetic perspective, opposites attract, but that's kind of not where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> but having the plan, I think that uh, when it comes to EMF mitigation, when it comes to skincare, when it comes to rejuvenation, when it comes to getting the right guidance on using things like thermal rolling, uh, it's sort of the wild, wild west. I find you can only get a certain level of information on these topics for free. But then what happens is you start to invest in yourself, both personally, professionally, you pay a little bit of money to this person here, a little bit to that. And this concept of sending and receiving, there's something energetically to that. Like what I mentioned before with practitioners, when you got a little skin in the game, um, you're probably going to be receiving something a little bit deeper back than just like a free exchange, right? There's some things that are free like this episode here, but for the most part, when you just invest a little bit into maybe being in someone's energy and picking their brain and having a more concise plan, then trying to have at it yourself um, can actually be a very good strategic move for leveling up yourself, both personally and professionally. That's just Absolutely. what I found. Absolutely. So we, we know where to find you on your website and we, we know where your, your podcast lives. Um, and I'm sure you mentioned this on either of those platforms, but where can we find you on YouTube? Cause I'm a huge fan of YouTube and I'm definitely adding you because I, I, I get lost very easily in all the information and uh, I'd love to, uh, to, to connect with you and, and watch your content on YouTube. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, it's very actually quite interesting, the demographic I see on YouTube versus the podcast. Um, when I had, when I first started my YouTube channel, Rachel Varga official is how you can find me there. I was doing actually a lot of plastic surgery reviews and, you know, those videos blew up. If I wanted to have a million subscribers on that channel, that would have been the route to do, but I don't like doing that. Um, those celebrities are people too, you know, I, I don't want to be nitpicking them. So where I focused on, on YouTube is that's where I actually house all of my interviews and I do them live raw. Awesome. And edited. If, if you were to meet me, what you see is what you get. This is me. I don't have time to edit anyways. <laughs> so that's where I host all my live interviews. So you can join in, you can um, ask your questions in the comment section, how I have it set up. It's a lot of fun. But I do more deeper content on the Apple iTunes and Spotify right. platforms where I can go more audio only and say things that YouTube might not let me say, like mm, vitamin D. Good point. Fair. Yeah. So there's uh, unfortunately that happening on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, so if I say things that really matter, you simply will never see it. So that's why I recommend catch the interviews live on YouTube, join the community that way. But do check out the audio only Rachel Varga podcast because that's where the, the gems are. And I give tons of live, almost daily uh, free updates on there too. So great way to stay on the straight and narrow for free. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, Rachel, this has been, I mean, your, your knowledge is, is very impressive, but your enthusiasm kind of brings it brings it over the over the top uh in, in a it's just a really engaging way this this interview has been has been fantastic and i really appreciate you taking the time to join us on the healthier tech podcast today well it's a little bit selfish i mean as you can imagine when i learn about all these things like skin optimization improving my cellular health slowing my cellular aging obviously i reap the benefits of it so what i do is i try all this <laughs> stuff out 
and I get the results. I see it in the mirror, right? I've uh, before I used to do about 60% in clinic rejuvenation, lasers, injectables, 40% home care lifestyle. Now I'm 90% home care lifestyle, dermal rolling at home peels and only 10% in clinic stuff. And I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, okay, I'm due for this, that, the other thing, but wow, my skin sure is looking great. I, you know, I don't need that anymore. It's just crazy. So I just report back and it's actually very selfish <laughs> what I learned because I get to reap the benefits. So it's a really fun journey, but it's the radiant stuff. Well, it's the uh, radiant stuff that people are missing and it's heavily tied to electromagnetics. So thank you for the work that you are all doing here on the show. Oh, shucks. Thank Thanks. you. And we'll have links to everything uh, that you said in the show notes. So thank you again, Rachel. This has been thank really so fantastic. Much. I look forward to having you on the show as well. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Healthier Tech Podcast. Remember to check the show notes for all the links and resources mentioned in the show. Please like and subscribe to the Healthier Tech Podcast on Apple, Spotify, or your podcast platform of choice. Get your free quick start guide to building a healthier relationship with technology and our latest information at healthiertech.co.